My name is Tim Daw, and I'm going to introduce a paper that we're publishing in Ecology and Society about the relationship between human well-being and ecosystems. And we introduce the concept of ecosystem service elasticity, which is basically how sensitive is human well-being to changes in ecosystems. So the concept of ecosystem services captures the idea that we get goods or services or protections from ecosystems that enhance our well-being, suggesting that enhancements in ecosystems can also enhance well-being, which would mean a positive ecosystem service elasticity, a positive relationship between well-being and ecosystems. But you can also have a low elasticity where people's well-being is not very sensitive to changes in ecosystems, or even a negative elasticity where ecosystems are enhanced and people's well-being declines. So for example, in a protected area, if you put a fence around a protected area and you exclude people from it, well, the ecosystems might regenerate within that area, but the well-being of the excluded people might decline. Now, these are all straight lines, but obviously the relationship between ecosystems and well-being is actually really complex, and we might expect much more complex dynamics. But the important point is that relationship is crucial for incentives for conservation or for opportunities of poverty alleviation from ecosystem service management. So to try and understand the relationship, we came up with a, a thinking tool, a conceptual framework that tries to really explore the connection between ecosystems and well-being. So we have ecosystems out there, but in order for them to enhance well-being, they need to have particular properties which are potentially useful for human beings. And then we need human inputs where people need to actually go and enjoy or to harvest or be protected by um, those flows. And we call that goods. Then those goods, because of various processes, assume a particular value, for example, because of markets or because of cultures. And because well-being is an individually experienced thing, the total value doesn't tell us much about the contribution to well-being. We need to see who's actually getting a share of that value, so who has access and how that value is distributed to different people. And each link in this chain is controlled by a, a number of contextual uh, or individual factors. So we use this framework to analyze five ecosystem services from coastal, ecosystem, from coastal uh, East Africa to try and understand which part of the chain are critical for determining that there's either a high or a low elasticity. So I'll give you one quick example where we determined that there was a high elasticity for this ecosystem service of aquarium fish. And the key components of that were that the ecological determinants meant that these species of fish are highly sensitive to uh, things like coral bleaching, which affect the quality of those coral reefs. And at the same time, the value of these fish is very high due to market processes and the, the overall price of aquarium fish in the global market. So we suggest that this framework can really help us to unpick that relationship between ecosystems and, and human well-being. And that by understanding ecosystem services in this way, we can think about possible points of intervention or critical points in this chain which underlie the relationship between human well-being and changes in ecosystems.